one of the things I really like about mathematics is situations where you have two seemingly different things, and then in truth there's a really deep and intimate relationship between them. And this is going to be the example in this scenario here. We have seen two different types of transformations, two different categories of transformations. And what we're going to see is that these two seemingly different things are really the same. That if you have a matrix transformation, you get a linear transformation. And if you get a linear transformation, you get a matrix transformation, which is a really pleasing result. So let's focus first on matrix transformations. And this is where you have some vector x, it's living in Rn. You apply a matrix to it, which does some algebraic operation, and you spit out of it a vector in Rm. Now, certainly this is a transformation. It goes from Rn to Rm, and it has this particular property that it is expressed by multiplication by a matrix. Now, I want to remind ourselves how this Ax thing was defined. Indeed, we said that Ax could be written as a linear combination of the columns of A. So really what matrix multiplication was is that if you had a bunch of different vectors, these are going to be the columns of A, the A1 down to the AN, then this operation A times X was an instruction of which linear combination of those columns of A are you going to take. And in particular, you're going to take this one where you stretch the first column by X1 and the second column by X2 and so on. So that was our idea of a matrix multiplied to a vector. It represented taking linear combinations of the columns of A. And indeed, we had this very nice geometric picture for what was going on in that scenario. Now let's investigate linear transformations. Linear transformations had to obey two different properties. One is that they played nicely with scalar multiplication, and one was that they played nicely with vector addition. And indeed, we really liked linear transformations because they respected the two major operations that we can do on vectors. We can either multiply a vector by a scalar or we can add two vectors. And those two different nice operations that we have for vectors have really nice geometric meanings. Like if we scaled by a vector, it would just stretch its length. And if we added two vectors, we had this sort of tip to tail uh, geometric placement of vectors. And that's what we meant by vector addition. And, and while we had those two properties, linear transformations were defined to be those things that, that played nicely or respected those two operations. So now we're left with the question, well, hold on, are these two seemingly different things really the same? The one direction is going to come to us a little easier than the other. In particular, if I want to look at matrix transformations, and I want to go this direction, I want to say that if I have a matrix transformation, it is going to be linear. So in other words, I'm going to try to prove that a, a matrix transformation is going to be a linear transformation. However, this is going to just sort of nicely follow from the algebraic properties that we've already studied for matrix vector multiplication. We want to get the one and the two, the two different properties of being a linear transformation, and they're going to follow pretty quickly. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If I take the, the matrix A and I multiply it by Cx, what I'm trying to do if I want to come up here and, and get this first property, I, I want to show that this is equal to C times AX, but, but we know that it is. We know that that scalar multiple, we can move it out the front and it, it's just going to be written as C AX. So in other words, that first property is indeed true. And, and, and the reason why we know this is true is because we've previously shown it. It was one of the algebraic properties for matrix vector multiplication. Likewise, if I want to take a of x plus y, well, we also had the fact that matrix vector multiplication, it distributed over a vector addition. That was another one of our established algebraic properties. So this is just going to be equal to ax plus ay by that algebraic property. And in other words, the algebraic properties we've proved just immediately give us that it's a linear transformation. Now. I want to go the other way around because this is going to be the, the trickier version of it. So in other words, I want to be able to show that a linear transformation is going to be a matrix transformation. So in other words, I want to begin with a linear transformation. So I'm going to begin with a TX and I'm going to assume that it is indeed linear. And what we have just shown is that I can write this TX as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. In other words, I can write that vector x as x1 times the 
first standard basis vector, x2 times the second standard basis vector all the way down to xn times the nth standard basis vector. Now, what I have is t of a linear combination. But I know that my t is linear. That's my assumption, right? I am assuming that it is a linear transformation. So I can use the nice properties that I know for a linear transformation. I know that it plays nicely with addition, and it plays nicely with scalar multiplication. That's what I've got, a lot of addition and a lot of scalar multiplication. So let me apply that in this way. Uh, first, I'm going to deal with the vector addition, and I'm going to say this is maybe t of x1, e1, and then I'm going to break it out and say this goes all the way down to t of xn, en. So that's me applying the property that the linear transformation of a sum is the sum of the linear transformations. And, and now I'm going to pull all the scalars out because I know I can do that as well. So the scalar x1 comes out the front, and I'm just left with t of e1 plus all the way down to the scalar xn comes out the front, and I'm left with t of en. Now, here is the most important point. If I look at what I just have here, well, what is this? Each of the TE1s and the TENs, these are going to be vectors, right? The, the, the EIs all lived in RN, and the transformation takes them to RM. So this is some vector that lives inside of RM, and this is some vector that lives inside of RM. And then the x1 and the xn, these are just scalars. They just live in R. In other words, what I have here is a linear combination of vectors. Okay, but, but why am I so excited about that? A linear combination of vectors, hold on. That was how we defined matrix vector multiplication. A matrix times a vector was defined to be a linear combination of the columns of that matrix. So taking this in reverse, I've got a linear combination. A linear combination of a bunch of vectors t of e1 down to t of en. So I think that this really is a matrix vector product. And that I can rewrite it in this way. It is the matrix whose columns are t of e1 all the way down to t of en. Each of these vectors, the te1 or the ten, that represents a column of the matrix. And then it is that matrix times the vector x. And there we go. We have some matrix in front of a vector. So I'm just going to define this entire thing to be a. And then what I'm going to get is that this is just equal to ax. In other words, if you give me a linear transformation, I can go and compute t of e1, t of e2, t of en, that's sort of a bunch of different vectors, I could compute those out if you gave me the transformation explicitly. And then from those, I could tell you a matrix A, I could find for you a matrix A such that the transformation applied to x was just the same thing as multiplying the vector x by this matrix A. And so we have proven what we set out to, linear transformations, are precisely, it goes in both directions, the matrix transformations.